Good morning and welcome back y'all. Thanks for joining us. If this is your first time here, welcome. So today's video is all about jack blocks. These guys right here. And for the last couple months, we've been getting lots of emails, lots of comments, lots of instant messaging wondering what are those things under your jacks and where do we get them? Well, the answer is simple. They're homemade and you can build them yourself. And today we're gonna show you how to do it. It's just four by six treated lumber and some horse stall mats from Tractor Supply. Now the reason we built them ourselves is because when we first got this RV, we didn't know what to do. And there was two options. You had the Anderson buckets and you have the RV snap pads. Now both of those are cool products, but both of them did not fully satisfy our needs. So the Anderson buckets, they are cool. They had enough height so that you keep your cylinder from extending all the way. So basically, the more you can keep that guy from extending all the way down, the more stable your camper will be. So you like the extra height that the Anderson block adds. But the problem is the Anderson block only works when you have good foundations like this or pavers. If you're on gravel, if you're on sand, I still see people putting down blocks. So the Anderson block works for getting the height, but you still need to carry a piece of wood because it needs something good to stand on. The other choice is the RV snap pads. While they don't offer any height, they do offer the rubber protection, like this right here. So it's always protected. So whenever you're on concrete, you will not damage their concrete or your jack or the pavers. And some RV parks actually require you have a rubber pad down so you don't damage their ground. Now the bad thing about the RV snap pad is it offers no additional height to the, to the jack. So now it's fully extending all the way down, making that cylinder rod longer, meaning this guy right here will be slightly more unstable. So the problem with the RV snap pad is I'm still carrying a piece of wood to take up the space. So I decided I can build something that'll satisfy both of my needs of having a rubber protection and added height, and I can combine the two ideas. So I built these guys. And today we're gonna take you to some of my favorite stores, the blue store, Lowe's. We're going to Lowe's, Truck Supply. We're gonna get some products. I'm gonna show you what you need to do these, and then I'm gonna show you how to build them. Welcome to my favorite place, the Blue Star. And here today for our adventure, we have Phil. How are y'all? Hey, Phil. So anyway, some of y'all may not know who Phil is. Phil is Alicia's daddy. And Alicia's not here because she's at home recovering with baby boy. They're both doing great, both doing fine. Thanks for all the wishes. Phil, are you a Blue Star guy or an Orange Star guy? Blue Star all the way. That's right, I'm a Blue Star guy as well. You guys let me know in the comments. Are y'all blue store people or orange store people? Y'all know my opinion, but let me know why y'all would choose the other store. We're gonna go inside now and get our supplies. Since these are for you, what color do you want them to be? Black. Black, okay. So in ours, we actually use some stain. You can use whatever color you want. And for today, we're just gonna get black spray paint. You can get whatever you want. Whatever whatever color you want your jet box to be. We're gonna need some fasteners. Last time I used the uh, two inch ones, so we're gonna go with those again. Two boxes because we're building two sets. So it's time for lumber. And one of our components is these one by sixes, eight foot long. So we're actually gonna get four of these guys. Our next wood is these four by sixes by eight foot long. So we've got two of those. So we got our wood from Lowe's. Now we're gonna head over to truck supply and get the rest of the materials. And don't worry, when we get to where we're gonna work on them, I'll explain the quantities and why we got what we did so that you can go get the right quantities for what you're trying to build. All right, we're at my second favorite store, truck supply. And if you've never been here, this is the coolest store ever. It's a close second to Lowe's. If they sold lumber here and some of the things that Lowe's does, I would almost have to go nowhere but here. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna get some handles and our horse stall mats. So these are gate handles. They're in the gate section at Trust Supply. You can get whatever kind of handle you want, but I've been using these because they fit my whole hand in and then they lay flat when I lay them down. So they're not sticking out from the camper. I'm gonna get some of these and then we're gonna head out there in the yard and get the horse stall mat. So we're outside in the yard and they actually have two sizes. They have the four by six, that's three quarter inch thick. That's actually probably too much, but you could put that on there if you wanted to. Then they have these uh, three by four foot sections that are half inch, and this is actually what we're gonna go with. It's actually what I used on mine, and it's what I use inside my basement and my generator storage bay as the floor to keep everything from moving around. So we're here at the place we're gonna build them at, and I wanna talk to you about the stuff we got. So we're actually gonna be building two sets today. One for Phil and his camper. And this is actually Thomas's place. Normally he has a camper parked right there, but he's actually out enjoying it in somewhere much cooler than here. Whereas we're gonna build him a set too. Now for them, they only need four jack blocks. So this right here, one four by six and two one by sixes plus these four handles is enough for four jack blocks. 
and this is enough for four more. Now for our camper, we needed six, so we actually used this and half of this. So just make your plans according to what you need, but we're gonna make eight blocks today, four for Phil and four for Mr. Thomas, and we're about to set everything up and start working. So our first step is to cut our four by sixes, these guys right here. And each jack block needs two, and they need to be 11 and a quarter inches long. So we're gonna go ahead and make our marks, and we're gonna cut all these. We should get eight for each one, which will make one set of jack blocks. So we have the four by six cut up right now into 11 and a quarter inch pieces. And now two of those will make up the center chunk of a jack block. So right there, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pairs. So that's enough for eight jack blocks. Now we're gonna set up the one by sixes and cut them. And then we'll show you how we use those to sandwich them between these. Funny story. We just ran out of battery juice in all of our batteries. I brought all my batteries for all my Dewalt tools from the camper. And I thought that they were all charged up. I was, I guess, mistaken because we made what, Phil? Like 16 cuts just now? 16. No more juice. So now, taking a quick little field trip back to the camper to grab the battery chargers so we can continue with this job. Hey, Alicia. She's checking in on us because we've been out here all day and it's hot. All right. Time to go to work, battery chargers. All right, Phil. I got the battery charger. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking we can use this plug right here and maybe get a battery charge before we get back to work. So let's see if it'll charge the battery. Oh my gosh, it actually is working. That's funny because it will not run our computer that we make these videos with, but it will charge a battery. So looks like by the time we get back over there, it's time to get back to work. So we got back with the charger and you'll notice that we're in a new spot. We were cutting over there but while we were gone the sun moved so now we have a whole bunch of shade right here in the driveway so we have to wait for all of our batteries to charge up so instead of going straight to cutting the one by sixes we're going to get the sander out and go ahead and sand all my perfect cuts nice and smooth and flat and then hopefully by then we can cut those guys okay so we finished sanding all of our four by sixes and i'm actually thinking about changing the title of this video from how to make jack blocks to how to have a heat stroke in Texas. Because right now, Phil, the, it's hot. The heat index is 111. And we're under a tree. It's actually mid-afternoon. It doesn't feel that bad. But that right there took way longer than it should have. So we're going to take a little break, drink some water. And next step is to cut our 1x6s up. And then we'll show you how we start assembling these jack blocks. Our batteries are finally charged. Right, Phil? Right. They are charged? Just yep. so you know, you're you're the you're the the charge monitor right now. By the way, there are two charging that will be charged. Oh, oh, will be. Okay, so probably by the time we get done marking these boards, they'll be ready to go, right? I'm hoping. So, <laughs> our next step is we're gonna cut our one by sixes, and we're gonna cut them to sandwich those together. So we're gonna cut each one of these eleven and an eighth long, and we'll actually make double the amount of number of those. So we have sixteen of those. Right? Yeah, 16 of those. So it could be 32 of these. 32 of these. And guess what? When we get out and cutting them, Phil, what? they're all going to need a little bit of sanding. Oh, boy. But it shouldn't be that bad. It's just the ends where we cut. We're going to smooth it out so it's nice and clean. Okay. So we're going to get set up and start cutting these. And we'll probably do a time lapse because who wants to watch us cut 32 boards?
All right, so we have all 32 pieces of our one by sixes cut now. We're gonna get the sander out and hit each one of the edges. And then we're gonna show you how we assemble that piece right there and these pieces right here. So we finished sanding all of our one by sixes and they're gonna go just like this. We're gonna put two like this. We'll take our four by sixes, put them just like this. And then we're gonna come back with two more one by sixes on top. Then we'll screw all these together and once they're secured, we'll paint them up. Here's the jack block assembled. So we have our four by sixes in the middle and they're sandwiched by the one by sixes on either side. And I've gone ahead and put eight screws on either side to hold it in place. And then once we get it painted, we will cut the rubber out to match this right here. And then we will screw it in on the edges all around. And that'll be the additional screws that'll hold this together. So we have seven more of these to build. So we're gonna build them right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We now have eight jet blocks assembled. Now we're gonna get them ready for uh, painting by sanding them just a little, well, that's a saw, that's a sander. Sand them in a little bit, and then we're gonna paint them up, and then we're gonna start cutting our rubber to go on both sides of them. So we've prepped all the blocks, and we moved over here near the wood because we're about to spray paint, and we're gonna use this Krylon Fusion Brack spray paint. Now you can use whatever you want, it's up to you. Mine I actually stained. I've actually painted some black and some people paint them gray or brown. But I'm about to paint them up and I don't need y'all to watch because that's pretty boring because no one likes to watch paint dry. So here it goes. All right, we're done painting them. That's the first coat. We're gonna let that dry. We're gonna start measuring the rubber for cutting and then we'll come back over here and get it a second coat and then we'll start installing the rubber on both sides. There's the blocks over there. We just finished up with coat two. Right, Phil? Right. Two coats. Two coats. And now we're gonna start cutting our rubber. And since lumber is funny, so a four by six is really a three and a half by five and a half, we actually have 11 by 11 squares. So with our uh, horse stall mat, if you flip it over, it actually has these ridges right here. So you just measure 11 inches over and draw you a line and then you can run a marker right here. You can see it right here. And then we'll take this straight edge board, put it right there, use an X-Acto knife, and we will make a cut. You won't be able to cut it in one try, but you cut it about half of it the first try, and then you can freehand it and go slow, and it cuts through pretty good. Anyway, so we're going to start cutting these up, and hopefully by the time we get done cutting, those guys are dry. It's time to assemble them, and you'll see them in their final form. So we have all 16 of our rubbers cut. We have all eight of our jack pads painted and back over here. And now all we're gonna do is take the piece of rubber, put it on top like that, and then we'll secure it with about, I don't know, six or eight screws, flip it over, put the second one on the bottom, and then we're gonna put our handles on. We have all eight jack blocks assembled with rubber on both sides and it looks something like this. We 
end up putting about eight on either side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. We put ten on each side. But that's because we need to cover the gaps and make sure that the rubber stays on. Now, we're going to use these handles right here. Got them from Supply. Going to put them right there. Going to mount them on each one. And then each one will have a handle. And we'll show you the final product. Okay, so we have our jack blocks completed. They are painted up black with rubber on both sides. And now we have our handle. So now I can carry them around wherever I need them. When I set them down, the handle falls out of the way, just like that. And now we have the added protection of the rubber on the top and the bottom, so we won't damage the concrete or our jacks. And we have the increased height from the wood. But the big reason why I chose to build these over buying stuff is because of the cost. The Anderson blocks, they are cool, but you still have to carry a piece of wood and they cost $300. So it's roughly $50 a can. The snap pads are also awesome because they offer protection, but no height. So you still have to carry a piece of wood and they cost $30 a uh, jack. These right here, doing it yourself, cost roughly $25 and I get the best of both worlds. I get the added protection of the rubber and the height. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you out and then you can build them yourself. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments down below. Thanks for hanging out today. See y'all next time.